a series where I just do a first reading of a poem to experience the joy of it the first time through. Nothing profound. I don't know even though if I'm if I do a good job reading through the first time. Sometimes when I reread to teach something, I can go back and think about it and then fit it into context and all kind of stuff. Uh, put in literary theory lenses on it and stuff like that. But when I just read to enjoy it, I just read and see if I like the sound and stuff. Screen door review. So this is where I picked. I picked these kind of randomly, and this one I picked very randomly, uh, mostly because the name of the poet I just thought was cool. Despy Boutras. I've never heard of Despy Boutras. Sorry, Despy. Um, I just like the name, so I picked this. Every time I read a poem, I, I really do just kind of look at the form, even if I don't like consciously talk about it um, before I get going. And this one, I look at it, and it's couplets all until the end, which is a single line. I look, I don't see rhyme on the end of it, although it looks like a fairly traditional MFA-styled contemporary poem. I don't mean that as insult, it just doesn't. It looks fairly, it looks like what's being done right now. I look at the line links. Uh, this morning before sunrise, I walk along the road passing all the board buildings, the undressed. So three different lines, three different uh, syllable counts, so I'm not going to look for meter and play of that here. After, let's just read it, see what's going on. This morning, before sunrise, I walked along the road passing. So this morning, it was early, walking along the road passing. I feel like we already know we're going to be in some kind of memory because we have after as the title. We're going to go back somewhere. All the boarded up buildings, boarded up buildings, I like the B sounds there. The undressed, I like how the commas, midlines, the separation of the mix, I like the Wayne Bright feel here, the undressed trees, the trees are undressed, and the buildings are boarded up, the buildings can be boarded up for lots of reasons, because of poverty, because of uh, like a hurricane, who knows exactly, we have puddled street corners, oh, the undressed trees, I feel like we're going to come back to this, that sense of undressing, puddled street corners, dark, so there's the water, maybe the boards relate to this, the street corners are dark as your eyes, the first time we spent in my bed, Puddle street corners dark. So the eyes are dark, like the puddled street corners. That's a pretty intense image there. Not necessarily a, a good one. Um, maybe it just seemed dark to this person, dark the dark eyes. How in that blue hour before daylight, so we're back in the morning again, tripping into memory, we awoke to the moon hanging from the sky almost full. So in this past moment, first time they spent in bed, they woke. And there was the moon almost full, and they woke. And before daylight, like now, and this person's out wandering the road. That morning we got caught in the rain. Yes, there's the puddles from earlier, the rain come back. That morning mirrors the this morning in the very first line. We got caught in the rain. I saw, saw dozens of earthworms scattered over the sidewalk, searching for dry land. Yeah, this is not an uncommon image in the U.S., the earthworms after the rain up on the sidewalk looking dying you sidestepped around one mused about your childhood spent fishing with families at local lake so you step around one and talk about memory so we're double memory now so we're, we're being presented with a memory inside a memory the memory of your father telling you that if you cut worms you can replace their parts and this looks like one of those <sighs> symbols that's going to come back. Um, this feels like something um, MFA-like, whether for good or bad. Um, it feels like a, a symbol that's going to come back later in the poem and wrap things up. feels like your father telling you if you if cut, worms can replace their lost parts. Um, back then, it's a neat symbol to bring up in terms of lovers. Back then, you used to brush your lips across my hand, and we tangled our legs. So this sense of closeness was then. It doesn't seem like now in sleep. We did this in sleep. The, it's a nice break with the in sleep. We don't know whether they're sleeping through their relationship or it's actually just sleep, sleeping in bed. Back then, there it is again. I didn't need any rebuilding. So this person, the narrator, felt hole at that point, didn't feel close to drowning now, the narrator feels close to drowning and this longing didn't ache to be severed, to grow back into something you never touched. 
Uh, so it feels like whatever has happened, like they are done at this point. But that longing is still there. It feels like it's separate the person. All right, this is that, you know, image. Like I said, I thought it was going to come back. The worms being cut in half to grow back into something you never touched to grow back. Um, the last line, you know, is severed, severed couplet. The rest, um, the rest are couplets. This last line's on its own. A little like it needs to be connected to another line to be whole again, like it's somehow cut single from the grain. So, a poem about uh, our relationship that's ended or desire that might lingers on after somebody is gone or after. Enjoyable, quick read, enough to make me want to go and find out a little bit more about Despi Boutras.